welcome to another episode of Ship of War, my review of X-Men Days of Future Past. X-Men Days of Future Past is directed by Brian Singer. It stars a bunch of talented actors and actresses who I'm not going to name because the list is endless. Now the premise of this story basically starts off where the X-Men are in the future. They're living in this world that is just ran by Sentinels and the Sentinels basically main focus is to get anybody who's affiliated with mutants in a positive way or who is a mutant and taking them and killing them or putting them in concentration camps and they live this future due to an event that took place in the 70s so because of this all the X-Men come and they team up and then they decide to send Wolverine to the past to fix this problem to prevent this future from happening. Before I continue on with my review I just want to warn people I may go into spoilish related things with the movie so if you haven't seen the movie yet I just want to pre-warn you I'm gonna get into spoiler things so if you don't care about that then continue watching if you do and you haven't seen the movie yet I suggest you stop here. So I went into this movie expecting a movie that I was going to fully enjoy and have an amazing time with. Now with that said, I have to say that my biggest issue with this movie is it bringing up Last Stand. I know Brian Singer can't do much about that movie existing in the X-Men franchise, which I'm completely aware of, but it's one thing to avoid it. Another thing to actually take story points from that movie and put it into this film. If you're going to acknowledge that movie when it comes to certain things, you have to acknowledge that movie when it comes to everything. And if you've seen Last Stand, you know that Trask is very much alive and he's a tall black man in that movie. So when you have that character being changed not only appearance-wise, but also his origins in the sense of in this movie they explain that he gets killed by Mystique, hence why that's why their future is the way it is, you kind of question like, wait a minute, if he's alive in Last Stand, that means these events that you're saying happened that caused your future really didn't happen because they state that Mystique kills him during that period of time and it's the 70s and obviously Last Stand doesn't take place in the 70s. And the other thing that really bothered me is that in the original Days of Future Past comic book it wasn't Trask that gets killed that causes this chain reaction it was actually a senator that gets killed. So it's like the thing like Brian Singer could have had a senator be the cause that had this chain reaction with Mystique but he chose not to do that and that's again what bothered me because he's again acknowledging that Last Stand is a factor in this movie he's taking things from Last Stand and implementing into this movie but he had a choice to not mess around with the story the Last Stand told when it came to the first two hours of the movie where they're trying to fix the future. If these other films did not exist I would have thought this movie was freaking flawless, I would have loved it, but the fact is I'm sitting there for two hours again having these issues with these contradictions of these movies with each other and how they don't follow with each other and the timeline's all messed up. Then you have Wolverine and his mess of timeline that I know people have noticed when it comes to his claws. But of course the last 10 minutes of the movie were just absolutely amazing was like by far the best thing they could have done. They basically resetted the story and they realized, you know what, we need to restart this story and have a clean slate. And they gave Brian Singer this gateway to just restart everything and do something amazing with the films in the future, which I thought First Class was that kind of like soft reboot, but apparently not because this movie happened but there were a lot of good things in this movie the acting was amazing the visual effects was amazing just with the visual effects alone some amazing scenes with magneto that i just absolutely loved seeing bishop as a live action character was freaking amazing and if you continued on with this review even though i kind of spoiled certain things in it i suggest you go see this movie so that is my review of x-men days of future past Thank you for watching and if you haven't already, please subscribe.
The Fault in Our Stars is directed by Josh Bowen. It stars Shailene Woodley, Ansel Elgort, and a bunch of other very talented actors and actresses. Now, the premise of this film follows the story of a girl named Hazel, who is played by Shailene Woodley, and then she befriends Gus, who is played by Ansel, and they develop this really close, you know, friendship because they kind of have the same personality. They're very both very witty and smart, and they have this banter where they just. You know, talk to each other in a way that's pretty hilarious.